Praise the Lord. Everybody, I said, Praise the Lord. We came here for the Bible study tonight, and for those who are joining us in the transmission, and you are the Bible study right there in your location all over the country, I welcome you to the Bible study in Jesus' name. As we come to the Bible study, if we're going to get the very best, we need to pray to the Lord and say, Come, O thou prophet of the Lord, thou great interpreter divine, explain thy own transmitted word to teach and to inspire is thine. Thou only canst thyself reveal. Open the book and loose the seal. It's on your outline there. The prayer is whatever the ancient prophet spoke. Concerning thee, O Christ, make known, chief subject of the sacred book, thou feelest all and thou alone. Yet there, our Lord, we cannot see unless thy spirit lend the key. Now, Jesus, now the veil remove, the folly of our darkened heart, unfold the wonders of thy love. The knowledge of thy impact, of thyself impart, our ear, our inmost soul, we bow. Speak, Lord, the servant, hearken now. La, 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 la. Transmitted word to teach and to inspire is thine. Thou only canst thyself reveal. Open the book and lose the seal. What the ancient prophet spoke concerning thee, O Christ, make known chief subject of the sacred book. Thou feelest all, and thou alone. Yet there, our Lord, we cannot see, unless thy spirit lend the key. Now, Jesus, now the veil remove the folly of a darkened heart. Unfold the wonders of thy love, the knowledge of thyself. In part, I hear I in my soul we bow. Speak, Lord, thy servant, I can Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for our Bible study today. We thank you for bringing us together. 
Our prayer already is singing to you that you open our eyes to see and you lend the key so we can have the proper understanding, interpretation, and application of your word. We are praying, Lord, that you will bless us in the reading and the searching and the study and the application of your word today in Jesus' name. That the study of your word will make us strong. And we'll be able to rise up in the strength of the Lord and the joy of the Lord in real dominion, the dominion of the New Testament believer in Jesus' name. Every brother, every sister present here tonight and listening over there in every location, I pray. Your strength and your power will come into every one of us and you give us dominion in, the, in Jesus' name. We we'll pray, Lord, you keep us awake. That the devil will not cheat us by putting us to sleep during the study. But Lord, you help us to have real consecration and real attention, concentration on your word in Jesus' name. Bless all your people and bless the speakers as well as the hearers together. Make us the stronger by the study of your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you very much. God bless you. Please be seated. We're looking today at the Word of God in Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10, reading from verse 17 all through to verse 20. And the 17 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give unto you power. To tread on serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Notwithstanding, in this rejoice not that the spirit are subjects unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. That's the passage before us tonight. The seventy disciples had gone out preaching the gospel. As the Lord had commanded and instructed them. And after they had gone, spent some days or weeks perhaps, then they came back to return to the Lord to report back to Him. And they returned with joy, giving the report of their success on this missionary journey. The excitement, the ecstasy in their voice was unmistakable. They had made a discovery that was to transform their lives and their ministries not just for that time but as long as they lived. When they returned it was with joy and they said Lord even the devils are subject and submissive unto us through thy name. And Christ had actually conferred miraculous power on them to heal the sick to cast out devils and it was wonderful for them but when they came to make use of that name and that authority surprisingly to them a lot of wonderful things happened and then they said Lord Jesus it was even surprising that even the devils obeyed our commands in your name they were astonished but Christ was not surprised at all he knew the power in his name he knew the authority in his name and he knew this was a normal scene and a normal lifestyle of real believers if they will just believe and they will stand firm on the unchanging undiluted word of god as it was for them so it will be for us if we stand in faith and we pray in faith and we command in faith and we minister in faith in the name of Jesus, that name will never lose its power. They arch dominion. We too will have dominion. And you will have dominion. We will have authority. We will have power. What they did in the strength of the Lord. What they did in the power of the Lord. We shall do. We will be able to do. Before I go into the study itself, I need to point out some things to you in verse 17. And the 17 returned again. The 70 returned again. I want to tell you that this is always a pattern in the word of God. You are sent out with delegated power, delegated authority, delegated privilege to do an assignment. When you have done it, you will not leave from that place and go to other places. You'll return. You'll return. Look at Luke chapter 9. 
In Luke chapter 9, looking at verse 10, when the disciples of Jesus Christ, the 12 of them, apostles, when they were sent out, this is exactly what they did. In Luke chapter 9, verse 10, and the apostles, when they were returned, told him all they had done. You see that pattern? Turn your Bible to Mark chapter 6. In Mark chapter 6, looking at verse 13, you will see what it says very clearly. When you have delegated authority and delegated power, you will return back to the person that gave you that delegated authority and delegated power. It says in Mark chapter 6, verse 13, And the apostles gathered themselves together unto Jesus and told him all things, not leaving anything behind, all things, both what they had done and what they had taught. We learn something here. When you are sent out to do something and you are successful, and the Lord has given you dominion, authority, and power, and you're doing the same well, don't allow the success to make you independent, autonomous, a man of myself, a woman of myself. I'm no more a baby in the Lord. I was sent out. I never did this before. Look at what I have. Authority, power, dominion, success in ministry. Come back. And you make a report of what you have done and what you have said. Even after Jesus Christ had gone to heaven and the church was operating and people were sent out, they came back. And when they came back, they made a report of what they had done. In Acts of the Apostles chapter 14, verse 27. Acts 14, verse 27. And they, and when they were come and had gathered the church together, they rehearsed all that God had done was them and how they, he had opened the door of faith unto the Gentiles they were sent out of Antioch and they went out onto the missionary field and when they came back it says that when they, they returned they rehearsed all that God had done was them how he had opened the door of faith unto the Gentiles they didn't fail they were not defeated. You know some people, it's when they have problems alone in the ministry. They have problems and questions and difficulties. That's when they return back to their region overseer, to their state overseer, or to their group coordinator, or to their pastor, or to the general superintendent. They will not come back until there is a question they want to ask. And sometimes you ask them, my brother, you've been on the field and you are working for the Lord. We never hear any report from you. Oh, they say, pastor, we didn't return because, you know, the Lord is prospering the work. There was no problem we couldn't solve. There was no challenge we couldn't face. There was no difficulty we couldn't resolve. And there was no defeat. Everything was going on well. Because we had success, we felt there was no point coming back. Yes, that's why you should come back. When you have the success and the victory and the dominion, and you know you're moving on well in the ministry, you return back to the source. And then you give information and report as to what you're doing. Acts of the Apostles chapter 15. In Acts chapter 15 verse 4, And when they were come to Jerusalem, they, they were received of the church and of the apostles and the elders, and they declared all things that God had done with them. It's an example for us. It's a lesson for us. It's an instruction for us. That when we have been sent out, then we return and we give reports back. Come back to Luke chapter 10. In Luke chapter 10, I'm reading from verse 17. It says, And the 70 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. Now, it says they returned with joy. The subjects of joy in the Bible. As you look at joy in the Bible, you find something. Number one, you find the joy of salvation. In verse 20, notwithstanding in this, rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. The number one joy, the prioritized joy. And the most important joy is the joy of salvation in Psalm 51. 
Psalm 51. I'm reading there from verse 12. Psalm 51 verse 12. Restore to me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit. And so then, if we're going to rejoice at all, we start with the joy of salvation. Number two, the joy of selection. The joy of selection. You see, in this Luke chapter 10, reading from verse 21, in that hour Jesus rejoiced in spirit and said, I sank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that thou hast hid these things from the wise and the prudence and hast revealed them unto babes. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in thy sight. The joy that the Lord bypassed other people, greater people people, wiser people, more resourceful people, and he selected you, and he chose you to be among those people that will be his ambassadors, that will go and represent him, the joy of selection. Number three, the joy of service. The joy of service. These 70, the joy they had, joy of salvation, joy of selection, joy of service. Chapter 10 of Luke, verse, uh, chapter 10, verse 1. After these things, the Lord appointed all the seventy also, and he sent them two and two before his face into every city and every place whither he himself will come. They were to serve. He sent them out to serve. What joy we ought to have. That the Lord has sent us to serve. And just the very fact that the service we are rendering is a rewardable service. The service we are rendering is commanded by Redeemer himself. The service we are rendering is an eternally important service. The service we are rendering is ministering to the souls of men and women. The joy of service. Number four, the joy of success. They came back and in, in Luke chapter 10 verse 17, it says, And the 17 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. The joy of success when the Lord has sent you out to do something and then you are successful and you are victorious and you have benefit to people and people's lives are being transformed and people are being set free and oppressed people demonic uh, demonized people are being delivered that success gives you joy the joy of success number five the joy of spiritual strength the joy of spiritual strength in nehemiah chapter 8 reading verse 10 nehemiah nehemiah chapter 8 verse 10 it says then he said unto them go your way eat the fat and drink the sweet and send portions unto them for whom nothing is prepared for this day is holy unto our god this day we we'll come back and we're we'll reporting to the lord what he had done through the name of Jesus, what a great day, holy day, sacred day. Neither be ye sorry, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Those disciples went out, 70 of them by number. And by the time they came back, they suddenly realized, hey, we have something, spiritual strength. And the joy of spiritual strength was theirs. Number six, the joy of satisfaction in his sanctuary. The joy of satisfaction in his sanctuary. In Psalm 16. Psalm 16 verse 11. Thou wilt show me the path of life. In thy presence is the fullness of joy. At thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. The joy of satisfaction in his sanctuary. What kind of joy do we still have? Number seven, we have the joy of submission. Uh, when the Lord sends you out and there's no argument. When the Lord sends you out and there's no resistance in your heart and with meekness and gentleness and submission, everything he wants you to do, you do in total submission to the will of God. What joy the Holy Spirit will burst in your heart, will originate from your heart. There will be a spring of joy in you. I was proud before. Now he has made me humble. I was resisting before. Now he makes me meek and gentle and loving and tender and submissive. In Isaiah chapter 9. 19. Isaiah chapter 9, chapter 29, verse 19. Isaiah 29, 19. The meek also shall increase their joy in the Lord. The poor among men shall rejoice in the Holy One of Israel. The people that are poor in spirit 
and they have nothing to be proud of. They know we did everything in the name of the Lord, not by our power, not by our strength. We are poor in spirit. We have nothing to show for what the success the Lord is giving us. It is only by the grace of God. It is only by the appointment of God. And we remain meek and humble. It is the joy of submission. Number nine is the joy. Number eight is the joy of sanctification. The joy of sanctification. When in the midst of it all, our hearts are cleansed and we're purged and purified. And our hearts are made holy. And where our sacrifice is rendered as holiness unto the Lord. In Isaiah chapter 35. Isaiah chapter 35. I'm reading to you from verse 8. And, and highway shall be there. And a way. And it shall be called the way of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over it. But it shall be for those the way fearing men. Though fools shall not hear therein. No lion shall be there. Nor any ravenous beast shall go up thereon. It shall, it shall not be found there. But the redeemed shall walk there. And the ransomed of the Lord shall return. And come to Zion with songs and everlasting joy upon their heads they shall obtain joy and gladness and sorrow and signs shall flee away that's holiness that's sanctification and it is the joy of sanctification and it doesn't end there number nine the joy in suffering joy in suffering you're serving the lord and you know that the work you're doing is appointed by the god of heaven and it's going to be rewarded by the god of heaven and even though there might be let's say persecution or suffering you're joyful in that suffering because you know it's not ordinary suffering it is a kind of suffering that is going to bring you reward in eternity so you have joy in suffering in first peter chapter one First Peter chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 6, where he greatly rejoice. Though now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations, that the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold that perishes, though it be tried, where fire might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ, whom, having not seen, ye love. In whom though now ye see him not yet, believing ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Chapter 4, First Peter, First Peter chapter 4, verse 13. But rejoice, rejoice in as much as ye are partakers of Christ's suffering. That when his glory shall be revealed, ye shall be glad also with exceeding joy. These 70 uh, disciples, they came back. And as they came back, there was just one thing that described their situation, their emotion, their state, and their attitude. It was joy. The joy of salvation. The joy of selection. The joy of service. The joy of success. The joy of spiritual strength. The joy of satisfaction in his sanctuary. The joy of submission. The joy of sanctification. The joy in suffering. And as these seven children returned, they now began to tell the Lord that the name of Jesus had given them power and authority. And it is the same thing that name will give us when we believe in that name. Because that name remains the same in authority, in power, in effectiveness. Like it was at that time when Jesus was still on the earth. That's why we're looking at this subject today. Dominion of real Christians. I divide the message to three parts. Number one, divine approval of real Christians. Divine approval of real Christians. Number Number two, delightful announcement to rejoicing Christians. Announcement that delighted them, that rejoiced their hearts more. And then number three, delegated authority of real Christians. Let's come back to number one, divine approval of real Christians. We come to Luke chapter 10. In Luke chapter 10, we're looking at it from verse 1, verses 1 to 3 first. It says in Luke chapter 10, verse 1, After these things, the Lord appointed all the seventy also, and sent them two and two before his face, into every city and place whither he himself would come. Therefore said he unto them, 
the harvest truly is great but the laborers are few pray ye therefore the lord of the harvest that ye would send forth laborers into his harvest go your ways behold i send you forth as lambs among wolves in verse 17 it says in verse 17 and the 70 returned again with joy saying lord even the devils are subject unto us through thy name when we went out and we went in your name those devils bent low and they bowed down and they were cast out and they could not resist at all they recognize that we were your true representatives and look at the approval of the Lord Jesus Christ from verse 20 notwithstanding in this rejoice not that the spirit are subject unto you but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven in that hour Jesus rejoiced in spirit and said I thank thee O father Lord of heaven and earth that thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent and hast revealed them unto babes even so father for so it seemed good in thy sight all things are delivered to me of my father and no man knows who the son is but the father and who the father is but the son and he to whom the son will reveal him and he turned him unto his disciples all of them now the 12 and the 70 and he said to them privately blessed are the eyes which see the things that ye see for i tell you that many prophets and kings have desired to see those things which ye see and have not seen them and to hear those things which ye hear and have not heard them here the lord jesus christ gave approval to these believers to show that they were disciples of his to show that they were followers of him and to show that they were real sheep in the fold of the shepherd to show that these were real genuine christians they were not counterfeits they were not fake but you know there are some scholars that teach erroneously that these disciples actually were not born again until the day of pentecost that's wrong that's wrong how will they not be born again see what jesus said notwithstanding in this rejoice not verse 20 that the spirits are subject unto you but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven all that these theologians and scholars are saying nothing could be farther from the truth it is very clear that the 12 apostles were born again as well as the 70 disciples christ sending them out to preach the gospel of the kingdom was an endorsement of the work of grace already done in their hearts he approved of their faith and of their character otherwise he would not have owned them as his ambassadors as his representatives he gave them dominion over evil spirits because number one he had given them dominion over sin dominion over sin first and then dominion over satan because listen to this anyone look at john uh, let the let the lord jesus christ himself tell you in john chapter 8 john chapter 8 I'm reading there from verse 34. It says, Jesus answered them, Verily I say unto you, Whosoever committeth sin is a servant of sin. How you see that somebody who is a servant of sin will have the victory over the devil? Look at verse 44. Ye of your father the devil, and the loss of your father ye will do. He, is a, he was a murderer from the beginning and about not in the truth because there is no truth in him when he speaketh a lie he speaketh of his own for he is a liar and a father of it now tell me if these people were not born again and they were still being dominated and being overruled being conquered by sin they were servants of sin and servants of satan and children of satan how will they at the same time have the victory over the devil who is their master you understand then all these people that were saying that the disciples were not born again they are wrong that couldn't be true now look because jesus had conferred a miraculous power on them 
to heal the sick and to cast out devil that was great and wonderful enough but not only that these people had experienced something more that even the devils were subject unto them through the name of the Lord Jesus Christ they were victorious over sin victorious over self victorious over spirits evil spirits victorious over Satan victorious over sickness the lord gave them all round victory that's the kind of victory the lord is going to give us we have that victory already in jesus name now to show that these people already you believe i'm sure you understand that these people actually knew the lord they were children of god they were born again their names were written in the book of life in heaven now let's see more proof in the word of god that they were actually born again in john chapter 10 john chapter 10 i'm reading from verse uh, from verse 26 it says in verse 26 and ye believe not because ye are not of my sheep as i said unto you my sheep hear my voice and i know them and they follow me these 70 that returned they believed on the lord jesus they believed in the name of jesus that's why they used the name with power with authority with effect with success they believed the people that did not believe those ones were the ones that didn't know the lord look at john chapter 15 john chapter 15 reading there from verse 15 and verse 16 henceforth i call you not servants for the servant knoweth not what his lord doeth but i have called you friends ah friends for all the all things that i have heard of my father i have made known unto you ye have not chosen me but i have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain that whatsoever you shall ask the father in my name he may give it you obviously all these statements from the lord jesus christ to his own disciples was a definite proof absolute proof irrevocable proof that they knew the lord look at verse 19 for example if ye were of the world the world would love his own but because ye are not of the world but i have chosen you out of the world therefore the world world hates you obviously they were born again look at chapter 17 of john in john chapter 17 reading from verse 2 john 17 verse 2 as thou hast given him power over all flesh that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him and this is life eternal that they might know thee the only true god and jesus christ whom thou hast sent I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. And now, O Father, glorify me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. Thine they were, and thou gavest them me, and they have kept thy word definite proof that they were born again and it says now they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are thee for i have given unto them the words which thou gavest me they have received them and have known surely that i came from thee and they have believed that thou did send me i pray for them i pray not for the world but for them which thou hast given me for they are thine you know when he was talking to the sinners he said you don't belong to god you belong to the devil you belong to satan but concerning these disciples he said they are thine verse 14 i have given them thy word and the world has hated them because they are not of the world even as i am not of the world how could jesus compare sinners to himself if they didn't know the lord if they were not born again if they were still sinners how will jesus say they are not of the world even as i am not of the world in verse 15 i pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil they are not of the world even as i am not of the world obviously they were born again their names were written in the book of life in heaven in philippians chapter 4 verse 3 philippians chapter 4 i'm reading to you from verse 3 
Again, we're learning about uh, these uh, people, other people in the Bible, that, that we have assurance that they were born again. Assurance that they belong to the Lord. In Philippians chapter 4 verse 3, I entreat thee also through your fellow, help those women which labor with me in the gospel, with Clement also, and with other my fellow laborers whose names are in the book of life. Their names are in the book of life. And therefore we can have assurance that these people were born again because their names were in the book of life. In Hebrews chapter 12, reading from verse 22. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 22. But ye are come unto Mount Zion, and unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to an innumerable company of angels, so the general assembly and church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven. Do you see that assurance? They are part of the church of the living God. And it's the church of the firstborn that is of the Lord Jesus Christ. Their names are written in heaven unto God, the judge of all, and the spirit of just men made perfect. In Revelation chapter 3. Revelation chapter 3, reading from verses 4 and 5. Revelation chapter 3 verse 4. Thou hast a few names even in Sardis which have not defiled their garments, and they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. This is divine approval. Approval coming from the Lord Jesus Christ, that these people actually belong to the Lord. He that overcometh the same shall be clothed in white raiment. I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. So then we understand these 70 we're studying about tonight in particular. And then everyone that has believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, everyone without any condemnation, without any guilt, that the sins were forgiven. That means they were born again. The assurance was there. They actually belonged to the Lord. Just to summarize before I go to point number two. As you look at these 70 disciples in particular, number one, they were worthy of Christ's trust. That's why he sent them out before his face. They were born again. Secondly, they were his partners and companions in labor. That's why he said, we need more laborers. Pray ye therefore. And I'm praying already. The laborers are few. And I'm calling upon you to pray ye therefore that the, that the Lord of the harvest will send laborers into the harvest field. Number three, Christ acknowledged that they were transformed characters. Therefore, he referred to them as lambs among wolves. That's in chapter 10 of Luke, verse 3. Go your ways. Behold, I send you forth as lambs among wolves. He said that their natures had been changed. The people they were going to meet in the world, they were wolves, ravenous, wicked, wild, destructive. But I'm sending you out, gentle, tender, believing, well-behaved, you are lambs. All these things show that they were born again. Not only that, they were teachable and obedient to Christ's instruction. They did exactly as he had told them, and they came back with good result. Number five, they remained dependent and submissive to Christ, even in the midst of success. That's why they came back to report to the Lord. Number six, they possessed the innocence and the simplicity of babes, because Jesus Jesus said in verse 21, in that hour, Jesus rejoiced in spirit and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that thou hast hid these things from the wise and the prudent, and revealed them unto babes. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in thy sight. Well, number seven, above it all, Jesus affirmed. And Jesus confirmed that their names were written in heaven. So, the next time you hear somebody saying that nobody was born again until Jesus went to the cross and died and rose again, you know it's a lie. The next time you hear that some people will say that all those people that followed Jesus Christ, the 12 disciples and the 70 disciples and the other people, none of them was born again. You know that it is a lie because we know that these people were born again. Now, 
When he came back and he made that report, and he said, even the devils, even the evil spirits, are subject to us through thy name. Then Jesus made an announcement to them. That leads us to point number two. Delightful announcement to rejoicing Christians. They were rejoicing already. And then the Lord made this delightful announcement to them. In Luke chapter 10 verse 18. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Jesus reminded them of the fact of Satan's fall. Because of what he said to the disciples that were rejoicing because the demons were subject to them, this was more delightful news still. But to Christ, it was the statement of an, of an accomplished fact. Because Jesus Christ knew about the total downfall and defeat of Satan. Number one, in the past. Number two, in the present. Number three, in the future. Number one was the announcement and prophecy in the Garden of Eden. Number two, at the time when Satan fell with a host of some fallen angels and was cast out of heaven. Number three, at the cross when Jesus Christ bruised his head and then Satan bruised him in the hill. And then, number four, when he rose from the dead and he made a show of them openly triumphing over the devil on the cross. And then when he went up to the right hand of the Father. And then because of what he has done And because of the power of his name The believers can now have Satan under their feet Because Jesus Christ for this purpose Was the son of God manifested That he might destroy the works of the devil then Let's follow through uh, Jesus said I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven Number one in the past As the eternal son of God The eternal one before his incarnation Jesus Jesus was present when Satan fell with his angels from heaven through sin and rebellion. He saw Satan fall from his first estate and from his glory and was cast down to the earth. And look at it in um, Isaiah chapter 14. Isaiah chapter 14, reading from verse 12. And Jesus knew all about this. In Isaiah chapter 14, verse 12, it says, How art thou falling from heaven, O Lucifer? Son of the morning, how art thou caught down to the ground which did weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. That was pride in his heart. He said, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high yet. Thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. And when that announcement and decision was taken in heaven, Jesus was there. And so he knew in the past, far past, far past, that these disciples knew nothing about the devil actually had fallen. Not only that, in the Garden of Eden, the announcement was made in Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3, looking at verse 15. Here Almighty God himself declared that a time will come when Jesus Christ, the incarnate Son of God, God that became flesh, and the flesh became, the word became flesh and dwelt among us, will be held as glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and full of truth. And when that incarnation would have taken place, and Jesus will come into this world, the devil will be after him. But the devil will find that again there will be another deadly blow on him. Genesis 3 verse 15. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman. Between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel. And that already took place on the cross of Calvary. In Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2. Reading in verse 15. Colossians 2 verse 15 and Ivan spoiled principalities and powers he made a show of them openly triumphing over them in it 
Now, at this time, that was the present time now that the 70 went out in the name of the Lord. They returned. And at this present time of making the report, Jesus Christ said, Yes, I understand what, what you're saying. That the devils are subject unto you through my name. Not only the devils, the little, little demons, the little, little evil spirits, their master. I beheld their master fall from heaven. Ah, from heaven. Where is that? You need to understand there is a first heaven in the sky, in the air. Because Satan is the prince of the power of the air. And when we are talking, generally when we say heaven, we might be referring to the sky, to the air. Or to the, you know, the, 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 the place above, in the firmament above. And we call it heaven. I see the stars in heaven. That's not the heaven, the third heaven, where God is dwelling. And look at that aeroplane. I cannot see. And look at it. It has gone into the clouds, into the heaven. Now, it's not the heaven where God is. When he said, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Uh, originally, he fell from the real heaven. That is from the place where God is living. And he was the principality, he was with the principalities and the powers in the air. But now, at this time now, he even fell from that sky. That's what Jesus Christ was saying. That, that the devil is falling. In your life, is falling in Jesus' name. And all the spirits and evil powers, even tonight, they will be under your feet in Jesus' name. And they will not be able to harass you anymore. Because in the name of Jesus, the devil and his cohorts will fall in your life in Jesus' name. But then there's another time that is still coming. When all his power will be totally neutralized. Do you know the time is coming when the mighty angel will come. With a great mighty chain in his hand. And take hold of that serpent. The old serpent. The devil that deceived the whole world. And will bind him. And cast him into the bottomless pit. And for 1,000 years he will be there. That will be another fall. Because the devil he keeps on falling and falling and falling. He will never rise in your life again. Uh, look at the word of God now in the word of God we see the victory that the Lord has given us and the very fact that if you do not allow the devil he will not he will not have authority in your life I said he will not have authority in your life in John chapter 12 John chapter 12 I'm reading from verse 31 John chapter 12 I'm reading from verse 31 here it says now is the judgment of this world now shall the prince of the world be cast out and and then in chapter 14, verse 13, hereafter, I will not talk much with you, for the prince of this world cometh and has nothing in me. In Revelation chapter 12, verse 11, Revelation chapter 12, reading from verse 11, Revelation 12, 11, and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. And by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives, even unto the death. In James chapter 4, James chapter 4, reading from verse 7. James chapter 4, verse 7. Submit yourselves, therefore, unto God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. And then we read in um, Romans chapter 16, verse 20. Romans chapter 16, I'm reading from verse 20. It says there, and the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. In First John chapter 5, First John chapter 5, reading from verse 18. And we know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not, but he that is begotten of God keepeth himself, and that wicked one toucheth him not. From tonight you are free. Because that devil has been defeated. His power has been nullified in our lives. That's why our Lord Jesus Christ, he could look ahead. And he could foresee how Satan will fall thereafter. That is, after the death of Jesus on the cross. The Lord Jesus Christ foresaw 
to how Satan's kingdom will be definitely uh, destroyed and that kingdom will fall before the post-resurrection preaching of his gospel after his disciples after his disciples all over the world have gone out preaching the word and then it says what the disciples had seen was but a little of what he knew would eventually happen to Satan and all his cohorts that even now as we more than 70, more than 700, more than 7,000 as the believers go all over the world in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ we shall cast out devils and we shall destroy the works of the devil because now the weapons of our warfare they are not carnal but they are mighty to the pulling down of strongholds and destruction of everything that uh, makes itself an opposition to the Lord look at it in 2 Corinthians chapter 10 2 Corinthians chapter 10 in verse 3 for though we walk in the flesh we do not water the flesh for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds casting down imagination nations and every high scene that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ and you're happy you are part of the victorious people of God part of the conquering people of God part of the successful and victorious disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ the name of Jesus Christ was mighty in the mouths of those 70 disciples and that same name from today will be mighty in your name in your mouth in Jesus name now we can walk free because now Satan is falling he is dispossessed of his power he is defeated in the name of Jesus and is dethroned and he will not have authority over any of us anymore in Jesus name because the name of Jesus grants us dominion Grant source deliverance and grant source authority and maybe you have been panicky and you have been afraid or you have been timid before every time you hear about the devil every time you hear about evil spirits every time you hear about agents of Satan you are afraid there's no reason to be afraid anymore because he has delivered the people who were subjected to the devil because of the fear of death but now we are free in the Lord in Hebrews chapter 2 Hebrews chapter 2, reading from verse 14. For as much then, as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that he through death, that is the death on the cross of Calvary, he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil, and delivered them who through the fear of death were all their lifetimes subject unto bondage, were subjected unto bondage before, but now we are delivered and we are set free, because now Jesus Christ is lifted above all principality and power, and all name that is named in Ephesians chapter 1, Ephesians chapter 1, reading there from the Verse, uh, from verse 19 Ephesians chapter 1 from verse 19 and what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards what who believe according to the working of his mighty power which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named not only in this world but also in that which is to come and has put all things under his feet and given and gave him to be the head over all things to the church which is his body the fullness of him that filleth all in all and now we have the victory and the victory that we've got nobody will ever take away from our hands in Jesus name I come to point number three delegated authority of real Christians delegated authority of real Christians the authority that those 70 disciples had it was delegated to them that is originally it belonged to the Lord and the Lord then chose them he wanted them to go out and do the work he would have done please come back to Luke chapter 10 in Luke chapter 10 let's read again from verse 1 I need to show you something here in Luke chapter 10 verse 1 after these things the Lord appointed other seventy also 
and send them to and to before his face into every city and place whither he himself will come. He sent them to the places whither he himself would come. Actually, the work of saving souls belongs to the Lord Jesus Christ. The work of healing the sick belongs to the Lord Jesus Christ. And the work of casting out demons belongs to the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the one to actually do the work. But now, he wanted them to go to 35 different locations. And in the days of his flesh, he could not be in 35 different locations in one, at the same time, one single time. Therefore, he got 70. And he divided 70 over two, that's 35. And he sent them to 35 different locations. And he said, I'll be coming there myself. Really, I shall be there myself. And I shall be healing the sick in all those locations. Now, what you are going to do, you are going to do the work I should have done. But you cannot do the work I should have done if you don't have the power I have. Because of that, I am going to give you the power, the authority, the anointing, and the spiritual strength. So that when you get there, you will do what I would have done. That's why he delegated his authority and power unto them. And so, as he delegated that power and authority to them, he sent them out. When they came back and they made a report, look at this in verse 19. Verse 19 of Luke chapter 10. Behold, I give unto you power to try the serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. Uh, let, let's, learn, let's learn a lesson from here. The Lord Jesus Christ had given them some authority. He had given them some power. And because of that power, they were able to heal the sick. They were able to cast out devils. What if they just left like that? We've got it. We've got the power. We've got the authority. And they never came back. This, verse 19, would never have been mentioned to them. They wouldn't have got this added power. This added anointing. This added unction. Have you noticed some people that have been at the Bible study? And it comes to a point that because of what they have learned at the Bible study. Then they went out and they preached. And souls were saved. They went out and they taught people. And people were edified. They went out and they did something for the Lord. And it was great. Very, very effective. And then they said, bye bye Bible study. I've got what I was looking for. I've got the same knowledge. I've got the same power. I've got the same anointing. I've got the same authority. I do not need to return again. Ah, you need to return again. You've got something, but there is small. You're doing something, but there is small. You are effective, but there is small. You are happy today with the joy of salvation, joy of service, joy of success. But there is more. When they returned unto the Lord, the Lord now said, I'm going to give you more. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. I know some, you know, people, and uh, they're not even members of Deeper Life, but they come to the Bible study. They want to refresh themselves, and they want to grow in the Lord. That is wonderful and great. But, you know, after some time, they feel, after all, I'm not a member of Deeper Life, so it's not a duty for me to be there every time. They have their Bible study. Uh, but, you know, what, what you've been gaining since you've been coming? Because it is when you return again, not that you join as a member of Deeper Life, but... You come to benefit, to refresh yourself, and to sharpen the instrument that God is using in your life so that you'll be able to do more for the Lord. But you know, some people say, it's enough now. I've got all that I need, and I don't need to return there. You need to return there. Behold, I give unto you power. It was when they returned again unto him. He now gave them this added power, and this added authority, and this added unction, and this added spiritual strength. I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. 
they became immune to anything that the devil could do. And the Lord will give us that immunity in Jesus' name. It tells us in Mark chapter 16. Mark chapter 16, I'm reading from verse 17. Mark 16, verse 17. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly sin, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Again, you see this is delegated authority. But remember, it's delegated to the people that are already born again. They are already children of God. They were not servants and slaves of sin or slaves of Satan. And they were not under oppression. How could God, how could Jesus Christ send somebody under affliction to go and deliver the afflicted? Or send the people that need deliverance themselves and then send them to go and deliver all the people that have been oppressed. No, these people, they believed in the Lord. And because they believed in the Lord, they were free. The truth had set them free. Christ had set them free. The power of the name of Jesus had set them free. And they went forth in the freedom that they had already. Believing in the Lord casting out devils. Believing in the Lord speaking with new tongues. Believing in the Lord taking up serpents and throwing them away. Believing in the Lord neutralizing poison that may come into anybody's life. Believing in the Lord laying hands on the sick and they are recovering. As uh, the Lord gave it this power and this authority, let us understand, that's the authority and the power that makes us to reign in life, to reign over every difficulty, every challenge, every problem the devil might throw on our way. In Romans chapter 5 verse 17. Romans chapter 5 verse 17. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more, they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. That is, as we come to the Lord Jesus Christ, and He gives us His power, He gives us His strength, He gives us His divine ability. He delegates to us not only the assignment but the anointing. He gives the assignment and He gives the anointing. He gives the duty and He gives the dominion. He gives us the, the, the privilege to go out in his name and do exploits in his name and as we actually manifest or, or minister in faith then we actually have the victory that the Lord has for every one of us it tells us in Matthew chapter 18 Matthew chapter 18 reading from verse 18 it says verily I say unto you whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven and whatsoever you shall lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. This is authority given to us. Actually, it's saying the loosing is taking place in heaven. The binding is taking place in heaven. Therefore, my disciples, the believers, my ministers, my ambassadors, as we are going out, and you meet a particular case, before you say anything, before you do anything, ask yourself, if Jesus were here, what will he do in this case? If the evil spirit is tormenting people, harassing people, if the evil spirit is destroying their lives, if Jesus Christ were here, will he allow this evil spirit to keep on tormenting people, harassing people? No, he'll bind this evil spirit. And then he will cast him out and destroy his power. Jesus is not here physically. He's in heaven right now. But he should have been here. But he is not here. I am his representative. I am his ambassador. He is watching me now in heaven. And because if he were here, he would have lost this person. He would have delivered this person. He would have released this person. He would have cast out this devil. He is in heaven. He is watching me. I lose this person. I release this person. I bind this evil spirit. Whatsoever you bind on earth, he in heaven will bind it. Whatsoever you lose on earth, he in heaven will lose it. That is the power of attorney that has given us delegated authority. He has given us. Then he says in verse 19 again, I say unto you that if two of you, any two of you shall agree on us as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. We have power. 
we have authority and the evil spirits and the evil powers cannot torment us anymore because of who we are and because of what we have i pray that every one of us we will get into the authority and the power of what we have and you will not the devil will not be cheating us for my inheritance anymore in jesus name see even before jesus came into this world there were some people that had some real real experiences and you understand what we have today we have salvation today because of the cross don't you know there are people that had salvation before uh, you know before the new testament david prayed give me the joy of that salvation and then we have sanctification today don't you know there were people that had holiness and sanctification before jesus came into this world how about enoch how about samuel how about daniel we had people that have the spirit of god the spirit and the power of the holy ghost after jesus christ has come don't you do you remember elijah he was a man of the spirit and he had the power of the spirit in his life we we, we, we have healing today but don't you know that in the old testament too there were people that had healing and they were healed when Miriam had leprosy Moses prayed and uh, Miriam eventually was healed and when they were being beaten by serpents uh, Moses prayed to the Lord and Jesus and God said you hang the serpent of brass on the pole whosoever looks on it will live and it came to pass if anybody was beaten of the serpent and whosoever looked actually lived and the covenant of healing was given unto them don't you know that even in those days in the old testament there were people that had salvation and sanctification and the power of the holy ghost and healing and deliverance and authority and dominion let me show you one of them in daniel chapter 6 daniel chapter 6 i'm reading from verse 19 because the lord has given us authority and this authority was even manifested by some of the people that lived before jesus came to this world it was a power of god delegated authority in uh, daniel chapter 6 i'm reading from verse 19 then the king arose very early in the morning and went in haste unto the den of lions and when he came to the den he cried with a lamentable voice unto daniel and the king spake and said to daniel o daniel servant of the living god is thy god whom thou servest continually able to deliver thee from the lions is your god able to deliver you i said is your god able to deliver you Oh, he will deliver you. In verse 21, then Daniel said unto the king, O king, live forever. My God, I sent his angel and I shut the lion's mouth that they have not hurt me. For as much as before him innocency was found in me, and also before thee, O king, have I done no hurt. You see, the dominion that Daniel had, even over lions, and the Lord has given us now dominion even over serpents. And it is yours. You will tread on serpents and scorpions. No evil power will be able to have any authority over you. In Psalm 91, Psalm 91, we're reading there from verse, uh, from verse uh, 14. Psalm 91, reading there. Let's read from verse 13. Here in Psalm 91, reading from verse 13, it says, Thou shalt, thou shalt tread upon the lion and Adam. Of the young lion and the dragon shall thou trample under thy feet. That means all these evil things that people are complaining about, I'm suffering for this, I'm suffering of this, they'll come to an end tonight. Because the Lord has given us the victory. He has given us the victory. This victory, we shall stand in it, we shall possess it, and enjoy it in Jesus' name. And let me point out something to you. The, the language of the Lord Jesus Christ uh, that he used uh, for these uh, 70 disciples, that the Lord is using concerning us as well, in this uh, Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10, reading there from verse uh, 19. It says, Behold, I give unto your power to tread of serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you and let me show you this in the olden days whenever the people went out to conquer to fight in a battle and then they captured 
the enemy. They captured the kings and the generals to show that they had defeated them. They will make them lie down. And then they will make members of their army, captains of troops, they will make them to be marching on them to demonstrate to everybody around that these people are defeated and they will never rise again. And that's what Jesus Christ was demonstrating to his own disciples when he said, Behold, I give unto you power over all the power of the enemy. And you will tread on serpents and scorpions. Look at it in Joshua chapter 10. Joshua chapter 10, reading from verse, uh, reading from verse 22. Then said Joshua, open the mouth of the cave. He had captured those enemy kings and enemy generals. And he put them inside the cave and he locked them up there. He put a big stone on it and then went to conquer. And when he finished conquering and defeated all the other enemies, he said, Open the mouth of the cave and bring out those five kings unto me out of the cave. And he did so and brought forth those five kings unto him out of the cave. The king of Jerusalem and the king of Hebron and the king of Jamus and the king of Lachish and the king of Eglon. And it came to pass when they brought out those kings unto Joshua that Joshua called for all the men of Israel. And said unto the captains of the men of war, which went with him, Come near, put your feet upon the necks of these kings. And he came near, and they put their feet upon the necks of them. And Joshua said unto them, Fear not, nor be dismayed, be strong, and of a good courage. For thus shall the Lord do to all your enemies against whom ye fight. Tonight I invite you to put your feet on every serpent, every scorpion. And to know as you stand in victory tonight, sickness under your feet. Evil power under your feet. Like Joshua invited the people of Israel, come and watch the defeat of the enemy. Come and watch. They are falling. They will never rise. And then he called the captains of the troops. He said, come on here. In the sight of all the people of God, put your feet on the necks of the enemy. This is how God will deal with all your enemies. I challenge you and invite you to stand up and stand on your problem. And put your feet on those serpents. And put your feet on those scorpions. On those sicknesses. On all those things the devil has brought in your life. This is what the Lord will do to all your enemies. You have got the victory. You have got your victory. Satan is falling. Evil spirits are falling. You have dominion. As an individual you have dominion. As a believer, you have dominion. As a family, you have dominion. As a church, you have dominion. As a whole region, a whole state, and a whole nation, we have dominion. Ours is a victory. Ours is a victory. You can go on now moving in your victory, marching in your victory, and triumphing in your victory, singing in your victory, rejoicing in your victory. Victory is just my brother. Victory is just my sister. You'll never be defeated again. You have seen it today yourself. You have learned of it today yourself. Don't be discouraged anymore. Don't be fearful anymore. This is what the Lord will do to all your enemies. My sister, you will stand. That sickness will not ruin you. My brother, you will stand. That infirmity will not ruin you. There is no difficulty on your way. You are victorious. You are victorious. You are victorious. Jesus purchased a victory for you. And he has given you the name. He has given you dominion. Stand in that dominion. Never bend for the devil. Never bow for the devil. Never cringe for the devil. Never cry before the devil. You are victorious. Victory is yours. Victory is yours. You have dominion. You have risen, you will never fall.